Thank you for watching WTAJ's Nittany Nation Rewind. Nittany Nation Rewind is proudly presented by Patterson Automotive. You're watching Nittany Nation Rewind. Welcome back to Nittany Nation Rewind. Now this team had a Heisman Trophy runner up. They also had a college football Hall of Famer, but they did not win a national championship. That's the theme, right? You could call this the forgotten years. At least that's the title of a book <laughs> about the 1977 and 78 football teams. And that's kind of where we started our research. Penn State football only lost one game in 1977 in 1978. So why would you call it the forgotten seasons? Well, sometimes when you're winning as much as Penn State did, you forget about some of the good times. Paterno in 1984 said 77 was his best team of all time. Uh, you, when you start losing Mickey Schuler, who's arguably uh, one of the top three tight ends in Penn State football history, maybe number one. You lose Jimmy Cephalo, who was a great athlete, great flanker. Uh, you lose your number one tailback in Steve Geis through graduation. The left side of your line, Paul Renaud was injured and John Dunn, the guard, was hurt, or I mean graduated. They had to replace the left side of their line. They had to replace their starting tailback, their starting flanker, their starting tight end. And uh, on defense, you lose an All-American like Randy Sidler, who's at the nose. And, and you come back in 78 and they struggled offensively, but the reason why is because they lost all those players. And after all of that, Penn State still had a chance to win a national championship in 1978. The team beat three ranked teams, Ohio State, Maryland, and Pitt, on its way to a perfect 11-0 regular season. Then, number one ranked Penn State had a chance to play for a national championship. And boy, this is a moment people will remember. Number one, Penn State took on Bear Bryant, and number two, Alabama in the 1979 Sugar Bowl. And it was iconic. Penn State got the ball to the half yard line in the fourth quarter, down by a touchdown, 14 to 7. On third down, Matt Suey tries to go over the top. He would be stuffed. So Joe Paterno decides to go for it on fourth down, just inches away from the tying touchdown and possibly a national championship. Mike Gooman would get the call, and the Crimson Tide defense would shut out Penn State. Heartbreak. That wasn't the very end of the game, and Alabama would clinch the win with an interception, but it was the fifth national championship for Bear Bryant. It was such an emotional moment, and we had such high hopes of bringing a national championship uh, to Happy Valley, and we were 11-0, and, and, and really had an unbelievable football team. You think of the individuals that played on that team, and... Uh, we just couldn't bring it, bring it back. Everybody thought it was first down. It was actually third down when they got inside the one yard line. And Penn State's down 14-7. We know, I mean, real estate is hard to come by. And you're on that goal line. I, I still think Matt Suey's over if they have replay. You just look and you thought, oh my gosh, can we ever win one? You know, I, I honestly felt sad, not for myself, but for the, for the guys that I that were that were heroes to me. I felt sad. Boy, it's kind of a downer. Matt, Matt Suey would have some revenge about seven years later in that same building, <laughs> but we'll, we'll get to that. Later. Okay, Finn State finished with a 22 and two record between those two seasons, 77 and 78. Yeah, it was a heartbreaking finish to a two year period where Penn State was a very, very good at football. And we said that team featured a Heisman Trophy runner up, college football Hall of Famer and a future NFL president Whoa. and more. Let's get right to it. It's time for, again, where are they now? And we start with QB1, Chuck Fusina. He was the Heisman Trophy runner-up in 1978. Oklahoma running back Billy Sims won the thing that year. Now, he went 28-4 in his time as a starting QB and left Penn State as the all-time passing leader. He did not win a championship until he played in the USFL and won two titles with the Philadelphia and Baltimore Stars. Now, he went on to run a sports equipment company after football. Dick Sporting Goods eventually bought the company and now they make baseballs for the Little League World Series. How about that? Yeah, how about that? Now for Matt Millen, who played defensive tackle at Penn State, became an All-American, and then played linebacker in the NFL. He won four Super Bowls as a player in his 12-year NFL career. He was the CEO and general manager of the Detroit Lions from 2001 to 2008. Millen then had successful heart transplant surgery in 2018, 
and he is now living a healthy life. That's always good to hear. And it's a wonder we have not talked about the first family of Penn State football yet on this show. Steve Suey played at Penn State in the 1940s. He married one of his coach's daughters. And his three children, Larry, Paul, and Matt, would all play for Penn State in the 70s. And two more grandchildren would play for Penn State later on. Now, Matt Suey went on to play for the Chicago Bears for almost a decade, where he was the blocking fullback for the legendary Walter Payton. And he also had a touchdown in Super Bowl 20. Chicago Bears fan right yeah. here. All right, now yeah. for one of the most versatile guys in Penn State history. We're talking about Mike Gooman. Don't remember him for that final carry in Penn State's national championship game. Remember him for this. The guy played baseball at Penn State as well. He played defensive back, tailback, wide receiver, return kicks, and return punts. And he played running back in the NFL with the Los Angeles Rams. That was until new coach John Robinson picked up a very special player. The draft comes up and you got this guy out of uh, SMU, you know, by the name of Eric Dickerson, who was just a pure athlete stallion, you know, of a football player. And <clears throat> John took him and, you know, he built his offense, you know, around Eric. And I moved then when John came in, I moved from running back, you know, to the fullback or to back then they sort of went into the one back offenses and had like an H back type of thing, you know, and that was my role and my position in uh, John Robinson's offense. Eric Dickerson ran for 2,100 yards in 1984. That is a single season rushing record in the NFL. That still stands. All right, now for a college football Hall of Famer. Keith Dorney was Penn State lineman from 1975 to 1978. He went number 10 overall in the 1979 NFL draft to the Detroit Lions. He was a pro bowler in 1982. Some guys do not find a new passion after football, but Dorney did. Me, uh, you know, pretty cocky individual. Not, not, I'm not as cocky as I used to be, but back in the day, I certainly was. I, I was thinking, hey, I'm smarter than the average guy. And when my pro career is over, I'm going to transmission, uh, uh, you know, I'm going to transition seamlessly. And nothing could be further from the truth. I floundered for years before I finally found my second calling, and that was teaching. He got a master's degree in teaching. He worked as a teacher in California, teaching youngsters from all walks of life. Now he's teaching finance to the smart folks in Silicon Valley. I love those stories. So to recap, 13 undefeated seasons, but only two national championships. Penn State won Big Ten titles in 1994, 2005, and in 2016. And if you want a running theme for Penn State, it's a bunch of almost. Like in 1973, another undefeated year, 12-0 with a Heisman Trophy winner. Woo! But only finished the season ranked number five. Come on April. now. You know him. You love him. Cappy. Is the only Penn State player to win the Heisman Trophy and get this. John Capaletti only played his last two seasons at Penn State as a running back. In 1973, he had 1,500 rushing yards, 17 touchdowns. He had 2,600 rushing yards in his career, and he beat out Ohio State lineman John Hicks, who would finish number two in the Heisman Trophy voting. That's right, an offensive lineman was a runner-up for the Heisman Trophy. And here's your fun fact, he's a classic car enthusiast. There you go. Coming up next, now you know how we got here, but what about now? James Franklin, the James Franklin era. What are Penn State's chances at a championship? We'll see you soon.